Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to 8DG Entertainment. Yo, we talk so much about, well, I have been talking about it, gaming season. And uh, Massive Detectors, Raincoat Plus, you know what I'm saying? This game, you guys actually voted for me to play it, and I haven't really played it as much as I should have. I'm such a passionate gamer. There's not many games that I see that I don't want to get my hands on. Some say I have props, but you know, I love gaming, all right? It's, it helps me escape. It's just a wonderful thing. It's the, to me the best form of entertainment there is. So, um, so here we are, part two. Now we're playing on PlayStation 5, if you didn't know, now you know. So when it comes to this new edition of this game, you can play it on new new platforms and whatnot, mainly on PlayStation. Don't quote me on it, and maybe on Xbox too. And maybe on Xbox too. So let's go ahead and um do the thing. I'm also here, I'm over here trying to play this, and I'm trying to close out some things that I got going on as well. So we're here on this train. I think we gotta check out all these little control it areas. It says main control room A. The door's locked, it won't open. Hmm. There's a driver's seat inside, but no one's there. The machine appears to be functioning. That must be the automatic operation device. It won't open. I guess that's obvious. This is the front car. The nose of the train is just beyond it. If it opens, I could fall off. Yeah, we don't want to open that. So I think we're just going around and checking all these checkpoints. This is the guy map. It's a map of the train. The first and last cars can control the train. The rest are passenger cars. We're getting into the detector points. There's a warning on the door. Please keep your hands clear of the doors. For your safety, <laughs> doors will remain locked while the train is in motion. We probably should have started on this side, but the way I loaded up the game. No, actually, I'm wrong. We got a restroom. There's a sink and toilet inside. This must be the restroom. There's no one inside you think? right now. I hope there's no one inside, cause. Hmm. It doesn't tell you to go in here and look at this stuff, hmm. but if you do it, you get some extra detector points. So I say do it. Excuse me. Why you want to know if anyone in there? That's cringy. I see a clean looking bed. This is probably the infirmary. It's locked, but there's no one inside. It says main control room B. The door is locked and won't open. I'm sorry you hear a bunch of crunching and cracking. It's my old computer chair. I see a driver's seat in there, it was against but the wall. no one's inside. There's a machine, but it's not on. Driver's seat's on both sides of the train. I think that means they can go in either direction. Oh. I kind of sounded like a real detective there. Huh? Someone's there. I heard a voice behind the door.
Excuse me, are you with the World Detective Organization? You are, right? You're Master Detectives, aren't you? We are. But who are you? Um, I'm with you. I think I'm also a Master Detective of the World Detective Organization. A boy like you? Master Detective of the WDO? It seems like it. Seems like it. Like hell, dumbass! Huh? A runt like you, a Master Detective? You're just shooting your mouth off. You look like a shriveled anteater. Anteater? What's the meaning of this? You got a lot of nerve posing as a master detective. You wanna die right here, right now? W wait Please, hear me out! Oh, right! I, I have proof that I'm a master detective! A letter? From the World Detective Organization? It's real. There's no mistake about it. What? Are you serious? Looks like there's a reason behind this. Go ahead and tell us. I'll allow it. Right, thank you. But there's really not much to explain. And that's what happened. Amnesia. Looks that way. I was hoping one of you would know who I am. Apparently not. No way. We're on the same team, but no one knows me? Then who am I? That's what I want to know. Besides, even if the letter is real, you may not be the right recipient. Why do you suspect me? There is a reason why. But first, do you know what the World Detective Organization is all about? Um, a little bit? I think I remember a little. Or not. Guess not. So you called yourself a member without even knowing. Yes, sorry. Well, I suppose it's a master detective's duty to shepherd the lost. Very well, I'll tell you. Maybe you'll regain your memories after hearing what I have to say. Uh, thank you. Listen up, the World Detective Organization is an extra-legal, extra-privileged organization devoted to eradicating the world's unsolved mysteries. Their branches exist throughout the world, and their investigations are handled by master detectives. As of now, there are roughly 1,000 master detectives in the WDO. All have powers specializing in investigative work. They are supernatural powers used in investigation, known as forensic fortes. People who develop talents such as clairvoyance or mind reading, they train at the organization to harness these special powers, which aid in their investigations. Those who manage to gain a forte are recognized as master detectives and given a detective deed. Which means, if you're a master detective, it should say so on your license. Detective Deed? It's an identification card. Check your pockets. I don't have one. If you don't have a Detective Deed, you ain't one of us. Even if you got one, I'd suspect it's fake anyway. Oh, hold on! I'm not trying to trick anyone! Um, 
pardon me. He seems to be the only one accused of being an imposter. But how about the rest of you? If you require he has some sort of proof, then the same would apply to everyone here. Huh? The hell'd you just say? She's right. Everyone here has just met for the first time. Naturally, we would doubt one another. Huh? First time? So, you guys don't know each other? Master detectives rarely meet together. We each travel the world on our own, solving cases. I've never seen so many gathered together for a case like this. We thought all of the summoned members had shown up and were about to start introductions. Then you walked in. I see. Well, let's start the introductions. We'll include the tardy one as well. What? You still want to do introductions? With the imposter too? It's vital for us to ascertain each of our identities moving forward. All the more reason due to this uh, perplexing circumstance. Perplexing circumstance? What does he mean by that? Now, let's begin. Quite interesting. Hot display you are. Where I thought I could easily um guess I forgot how to bring up the user interface. Let's go ahead and just do the introductions. I'll figure it out in a minute. I'm trying to, I was trying to save. I am Zange Eraser. I come from a detective agency on the front lines, far from here. Perhaps you expect an introduction. But I have nothing to say. Let the past melt like ice in an evening's drink. That's how I live my life. My forte is thoughtography. I can transcribe images from my memory onto electronics. That's all for me. There's no need for any further explanations. There's clearly something extraordinary about him. Observation of one's own self-image explained objectively. Uh, are you okay? Did I do something that caused you concern? Uh, no, it's just you seem to be having difficulty introducing yourself. I rarely have a need to do so, so I was considering what approach to take. After all, is there such a thing as a self in the first place? is a bundle of nervous tissue reacting to external stimuli. If I had to, I guess I'd call myself Poochie Lathman. So, your name is Poochie then? Names are meaningless. A method of arbitrary labeling for self-recognition. Symbols for categorization. Nothing more. To that end, it serves the same purpose as a detective deed. Or so I, Poochie, believe. She seems a bit odd. 
most of the World Detective Organization's work is investigating unsolved mysteries. I was trusted with many bureaucratic investigations. My clients are mainly enterprises and politicians. Depending on the client, I use my forte to see if the transaction party is trustworthy. My forte is known as audio aptitude. When I concentrate, I can hear anything from distant whispers, footsteps, and even heartbeats. No one is safe to speak of their secrets when I, Gucci, am around. Oh, then did you hear anything suspicious at the station? Maybe we can figure out what happened to me. Unfortunately, unless I focus my efforts on listening, I'm unable to hear things far away. Oh, I see. Constantly listening in on all sounds leads to a sensation of my physical boundaries within reality dissolving away. My already tenuous sense of self starts to vanish, which is why I tend to close my ears unless I'm using my powers. Being blessed with powers sure comes at a price. Did she always act in such a strange way? Or did it develop after she obtained her forte? Regardless, she definitely has a distinct air about her. That is all I have to say about myself. Oh. <laughs> this part of her seems a bit more... normal. I'll go first. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Zilch Alexander. I'm from the Southern Forest Preserve District's detective agency. They call me Nature's Mediator. I love people, nature, and the harmony between them. However, there are times when some would attempt to ruin that harmony. My specialty is in handling those people. Have you heard of the chain of mysterious murders surrounding the dam construction at Souls Lake? Rumor has it that one by one, everyone involved with the dam's construction died, all cursed by a sunken ritual site. It was a once-in-a-century difficult case. The one who solved it was none other than myself. There wasn't much to it. The culprits were locals who wanted the rights to the dam for themselves. The strange part is that all 52 villagers were in on it. They all kept their lips sewn shut to protect the secret. I'll let you figure out what that means. When harmony between man and nature is disrupted, disaster strikes. That is one thing I have learned as a detective. Nature's mediator? He does look like a good detective. Though he suspected me, he still gave me a fair chance to explain myself. He looks a bit intense, but maybe he's a good person. I'll describe my forte as well. I'm uncomfortable exposing classified information regarding investigators, but this is an emergency. My forte is... Animal Investigation. I can control animals as I wish, and recruit them from my inquiries. Quite fitting for the philanthropist that I am. Though useful in many ways, I mainly use it to gather intel. It allows me to survey a target while remaining undetected. 
As a basic rule, I can only control four-legged mammals. Less intelligent animals are easier to control. I often use mice. They're the perfect animals for undercover investigations. Unfortunately, I can't show it off right now, because there aren't any mice on this train. Not only is he a good detective, but he also has those powers. He really is impressive. That is all from me. With love, I yield to the next person. For just a second, I'll be quick. Thank you. That was quite educational. That outfit fits you well. My name is Melanie Goldmine. My home is rather far north from here. Up there is a branch with detectives adept at spiritism. I was also active there as a medium. souls of the dead by using my body as a vessel. Summon a soul? Can you summon anyone who has died? Like, for example, the victim of a crime? Yes, of course. But there is one condition. I require the clothes that person wore while they were still alive. Only by wearing their clothes can I summon their soul. Hence, why my powers don't work on people smaller than me, or if the person is far bigger. Overall, the size must match. Also, I can't abide outfits with no fashion sense. Filthy, reeking clothes are always out of the question. That sounds more like a preference than a condition. Clothes make a man. They reveal all about one's livelihood. Like skin worn over skin. That's what clothes are all about. Consider that when compared to bare skin, clothing has a greater surface area seen by other people. Therefore, clothes are an expression of a person's identity and originality. You ever think about how you've never heard of ghosts being naked? Ghosts wear clothing because those clothes are a part of their identity. Now that you mention it... That's why, despite your amnesia, I can tell the kind of person you are just by looking at the clothes you wear. Really? Your uniform is undoubtedly an official one supplied by the WDO. And I found it fits you perfectly after measuring your size. I don't think it could possibly belong to someone else. Which means... I really am a master detective? Am I one or not? I can't figure it out without my memory coming back to me. That's all I have to say. I'm the medium detective Melanie. Nice to meet you all. I'm Mayfex Logan. I'm from the detective branch in the eastern slums. Call me a master detective now, but I'm originally a broke, illegal immigrant. When I was a kid, I was in an upstanding home, living an upstanding life. My parents were lawyers who never tolerated injustice. 
They should have left well enough alone with that local mafioso. Because they went after him, they were murdered. Their necks were cut open right in front of me. That's awful. I ran away to protect myself and jumped on a ship at the port. I didn't know where the ship was going. That was the moment I threw away my past and my home. I drifted to the slums and did everything I could to survive. I managed to survive until now, thanks to luck. With my natural talents, I was able to become a detective. But I also wanted revenge. I can't stand evil. But even if you ain't evil, I'll show no mercy to those who stand in my way. If I can't figure out the difference between the good guys and the baddies, then I just beat up both of them. Kill or be killed is my motto. He looks scary, but that's not all. I think there's a deep sadness within him. I can't share details about my forte. Just know it's kind of like radar. That's all you're going to tell us? You got a problem with that, you tiny runt? Not at all! You sure are a frail-looking kid, aren't you? And pale to boot, like disaster's got its claws on you. You sure nothing weird is haunting you? <laughs> a detective's gotta be tough. How about a little training? First, you'll need to get used to stab wounds. We'll start with an ice pick, then scissors, then a fruit knife. No thanks. Don't be shy, runt. No, really, I'm fine. Too bad. Lastly, it's your turn, Yuma. Aside from having amnesia, is there anything else we should know about? I still can't remember anything. If you really are a master detective, then you should have some sort of forte. I have no idea. Oh, young man, are you sure you don't remember? How about the kind of clothes you usually wear? Or brands you like? You only inquired about clothing. Maybe you'll remember after a few punches to the head. Hold on! Aphex, stop that. If you knock him out, he won't be able to speak. The perplexing circumstance we face may have something to do with his memories. That's right, I was wondering about that. What do you mean by perplexing circumstance? Did something happen? Well... Something unexpected has occurred on our trip. The number of people is off. The number of people? I, Hoochie heard from the World Detective Organization that the number of master detectives on the train was... precisely five. Five? One... Two... Three... Four... Five... Six! There's six of us! I also heard from the WDO that five master detectives will gather on board. Hence why when you called yourself a master detective, I was honestly surprised. I knew this job wouldn't be easy, but there's already a mystery before us. <laughs> this is getting exciting. It's obvious what's going on. There's an imposter among us. 
It's not me. I think. How about we contact the WDO and find out? It could be a mistake. It's no use. I can't reach them. There's no signal here. <laughs> Who could the uninvited sixth guest be? It's obvious. I'm the most suspicious. Especially with my amnesia in this situation. Could I be the imposter? And I just can't remember? I am the sixth one here. All right, I got it. Hey, since you're all clueless, I'm gonna tell you my extra sharp deduction. You may speak. I'll allow. Why would I need your permission? Whatever. Way I see it, the runt here ain't the imposter. Huh? It'd be boring if the most suspicious one is the culprit. The run must have been attacked by the real culprit. The memory loss is a side effect of the attack. And the imposter's motive? Why would they attack Yuma? To pretend to be a master detective and replace the runt on the train. The plan was going smoothly. The runt suddenly woke up. He got on the train right before it departed. And the results stand before us. Obviously, the imposter miscalculated. The runt's gotta be tougher than he looks. Oh, that's a surprisingly proper deduction. And I thought you'd be the most useless one here. Why, thank you. In other words, I was knocked out at the station because someone attacked me? But I don't think I've been injured. Excuse me. My deduction is slightly different. Let's hear it. I'll allow it. Stop acting like we need to get your permission! I suspect that the entire situation is a test designed by the World Detective Organization. A test? A WDO exam officer has disguised themselves as a member and is ascertaining our skills here. If that were the case, Yuma here could possibly be the exam officer. Me? An exam officer? <laughs> Bring it on! I don't care if it's the WDO or a hitman. If you want to test me, I'll show you what I got! What are you trying to do? For now, I'll check to see if there are other uninvited guests. I wouldn't want any accomplices lurking about. And how are you going to do that? Like this! Let's go! of the enemy. <sighs> Turns out there really are just six of us on this train right now. Um, what did you do? I used my forte, life detection. I can detect life in a 50 meter radius and pinpoint its location. The mechanism is a trade secret, but I can say without a doubt that we're the only ones on this train. Talk all you want, but who can verify that you're not lying? We're never gonna get anywhere if you start doubting everything! Use your own damn powers to figure it out then! I see. So Forte's come in handy at a time like this. In that case, there's someone else with a power that can confirm if other passengers are on board. Want me to search again? What's the point of that? I'm sorry. I got yelled at. Um, Poochie, would it be possible for you to verify what Aphex said is true? 
Yes. I, Pucci, was contemplating it at the moment. Even if someone is hiding, my audio aptitude is able to detect their breathing and heartbeats. Shall I try? Yes, please. Hey, what's with the gloomy little girl? Don't tell me she's motion sick. She's using her audio aptitude to check if there are other passengers. Oh, really? Well, that's great. Go for it. It'll prove I'm right. Shut. Huh? Shut up, you brain dead idiots! Pardon me. Would you mind quieting down for a bit? I need to concentrate. This sensation, I felt it when Aphex used his powers. Somehow, it feels like I can hear what Poochie hears. Does no one else hear it? What's going on? I finished. I cannot hear the heartbeats of anyone besides the six of us here. Though one could hold their breath, they still cannot stop their heart from beating. In other words, there's no one else on this train. I, Pucci, guarantee it. See? I told you so! Sorry for calling you gloomy earlier, little girl. You know, I'm glad you've confirmed my findings, but... Aren't our powers kind of the same? I can hear heartbeats from 500 meters away. <clears throat> so you're the useless one. Quiet, you catty bitch! <laughs> Moving on, we've now got proof from two master detectives. We can say for sure that there are no other passengers. Though one may be a lying imposter, the other's statement can still be trusted. One of them an imposter? But Aphex and Poochie both use their fortes. I could feel them using their powers, so I think it's safe to say both are master detectives. But I'm the only one who can sense their powers. No one else seems to have the same experience. Why am I the only one? <laughs> What's wrong with you, old man? You gone senile or something? Can you all hear that? The sounds of a running train, the wheels of fate chugging along. In the same way, our fate continues to turn. This train will press on until we reach our destination. No one can get off midway, including the uninvited sixth. Let's discover which of us is the caged bird in here. <laughs> My fading detective spirit is revitalized once again thanks to this burning mystery. Not bad. Things are getting interesting. You're joking. What could the imposter even accomplish? We're all master detectives here. And yet we don't know who the fake one is. I've used my power, so obviously I'm the real deal. The gloomy girl detective also passes. She ain't no fake. So, how about the guy blowing smoke, huh? Why don't you go ahead and prove yourself with your forte? How about it, you four-eyed fox detective? As I have already explained, my power involves animals. Without them, I can't use it. So, you're fine being considered a suspect then? You are free to think what you wish. 
Unfortunately, I can't prove myself either. Without a dead body, I can't use my powers as a medium. Now we've got two suspects. How about you, old man? I don't mind showing off, but it won't clear any suspicions. The sixth uninvited guest could possibly be a traitorous master detective with their own forte. That's true. There's no end to this! To hell with it! Everybody line up! I'll deck you one by one! Whoever passes out is safe, got it? The real deal! If you don't pass out in one hit, then you gotta be the imposter! Calm down. Let's do things logically, like the detectives we are. Pardon me. I suggest we investigate this, starting with the motive for the imposter's infiltration. Hmm, the motive. One possibility is that it's a test from the World Detective Organization. Are there any others? There are. You may speak. I'll allow it. For the hundredth time, why would we need your permission? The Amaterasu Corporation. They could be responsible for this. And your reasoning? Someone has been tailing me for the past few days. It started after I was first assigned to Kanai Ward. Wherever I went, I could sense the presence of someone in the shadows, but I could never catch them in the act. It was getting annoying, so I tried to bait them out. I walked around town in my underwear, and at last, they revealed themselves. Hold up. Did you just say that you... Hmm? Something the matter? <clears throat> Never mind. Continue. I avoid solving problems with violence, so I was unable to apprehend them. However, I saw them escaping in one of Amaterasu Corporation's cars with my own eyes. Why would Amaterasu Corp spy on you? Because they don't want Kanai Ward to be investigated. Perhaps this is the same situation. Which is why I think our uninvited sixth guest is a spy from Amaterasu. The spy has only one goal, to disrupt our trip to Kanai Ward. Hence why they are pretending to be a master detective among us. Hmm, so you believe Amaterasu is involved? Not impossible, though your reasoning is somewhat lacking. I do not see how escaping in one of Amaterasu Corporation's cars is proof someone is a company spy. Well, that's fair. Um, excuse me. You keep talking about it, but what's Amaterasu Corporation? Are you kidding me? We gotta explain that too? It's fine. We can teach Yuma as we share information with one another. What is the Amaterasu Corporation? In short, Amaterasu is a freaking huge company. You see their products practically everywhere in daily life. They make everything from kids' toys to fighter jets, industrial goods, electronics, pharmaceuticals, everything. Big companies always got dark underbellies. With Amaterasu, with their smoke, there's a whole building burning down. That's a detective joke. Funny, huh? Sure, I got it, thanks. We're heading to Kanai Ward. What does that have to do with Amaterasu Corporation? It's fairly complicated, but Kanai Ward is essentially an Amaterasu Autonomous Zone. Previously, Kanai Ward was just another regional city. But as it was being developed by Amaterasu Corp, the city itself transformed. 
Factories, research labs, and affiliate companies were built. In no time, the whole place belonged to Amaterasu. As a matter of fact, Kanai Ward is essentially ruled by the Amaterasu Corporation. Political power has no influence there. Since it's so isolated, no one has been traveling to and from Kanai Ward. Isolated? Exactly. Because of that, no information has been getting out, aside from rumors of unsolved cases. This has been going on for years, but the unified government has been turning a blind eye to the whole thing. The Amaterasu Corporation's influence affects not just the UG, but the entire world. Given the situation, the World Detective Organization couldn't wait any longer and decided to act. As a result, master detectives are gathering in Kanai Ward. And that's pure speculation, mind you. We won't know the full details until we arrive. I see. Thank you very much. Speaking of, this train is called the Amaterasu Express, isn't it? Yes. The Amaterasu Express is an entirely driverless train developed by the Amaterasu Corporation. The WDO made arrangements to prepare it for arrival at Kanai Ward. Normally, it has no passenger cars for the trip to Kanai Ward, but they added ours as a special exception. It features enough passenger space for all of us and a lavish dining car. Quite the warm welcome. A perfect setup to persuade us nothing is amiss in Kanai Ward. By the way, the windows and doors are completely locked until we arrive. They say it's for our safety. But I feel as though we're stuck in a big, moving coffin. All the sash windows are sealed, so they can't be opened. I, Poochie, confirmed it myself prior to the train's departure. Perhaps these measures were taken to prevent infiltrators or stowaways. Once it's en route, the Amaterasu Express becomes a box that's impossible to enter or exit. If you feel up to it, why don't you take a look around? But you can access the fifth car, the one at the end. The door appears to be broken and won't open. Broken? Well, go ahead and see for yourself. All right. Has anything you heard sound familiar? It feels like my first time hearing about any of it. Sorry. I see. It's all right. Just tell us if you do remember anything. Thank you. He seems nice and all, but maybe he's the imposter. Huh? Um, did someone just speak? No. Hey, what's wrong? You've gone pale. How about you have something warm to drink and get some rest? Although, we only seem to have coffee here. Do you drink it black? Or do you need some milk? Front probably wants milk. Hey, how old are you anyway? I can't tell from the way you dress. Never mind him. Here, have a drink to warm yourself up. <sighs> Thank you. What was that voice earlier? Am I hearing things? I have amnesia, and now I'm hearing things. What's happening to me? I wonder if it has something to do with the sixth person. Besides, who is this sixth uninvited guest anyway? I should think about it a bit. Who is the most suspicious person here?
Zonge doesn't want to talk about himself. Is he staying quiet to avoid drawing attention? Could he be the imposter? I don't know anything about his powers, so he is suspicious. No matter how much I think about it, we have no proof of anything so far. If I really am a master detective, I could have some useful powers. I wonder if I can somehow remember what those powers were. Remembering now won't do any good. There it is again. I keep hearing that voice. Jeez, what's happening to me? Hey, Runt! Uh-huh? Get over here. The old man is gonna show off his powers. What? Uh, Zange? Okay, guys, I know I haven't talked that much throughout this video, but please leave likes, comments, and everything. If you, uh, the more likes and the more support you get, the quicker I push out videos, especially when I really see that you're being supported. Uh, this this game has already unfolded something crazy. I'm wondering if the voiceover is going to continue the amount that they have. Um, but one thing I know about Spike Sunsoft and the creators of Donkey Kong, but they do like to have a lot of voiceovers. Uh, so. Maybe they uh, just paid the money to make sure that happened. Who knows? But with that being said, shout out to Spike Chunsoft for giving me a copy of the game. The game is available now. And yeah, I'll see you guys next show, next video. I'm out of here. Peace!